afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John. I'm the director of R&D here at Intelligent Concrete, where we make concrete do the impossible. Saving the world with all the concrete in it. So we're doing a Q&A day today. Uh, a lot of great questions that have come to us through YouTube as well as through LinkedIn. This one is on colloidal silica. We did an awesome video, a colloidal silica Q&A. It was vlog number 358 that we will include in the comments set or the description below. Did I say that right? Awesome. So this question comes from DEYC3. Ding! Thank you, David, for the awesome question. Well, thank you. This really reveals the source of my confusion. How does the surface area of colloidal silica achieve a change in slump? Excellent question, David. It's all about uh, physical and chemical phenomena. And what I mean by physical phenomena is just that we have a higher surface area. And with that higher surface area, it has a tendency of monopolizing either paste or changing up the viscosity of our hydrated cement matrix when it's still in a fresh state. Now, that being said, there's also a chemical component of it. And what I mean by that is that colloidal silica, because it has a higher surface area, it increases the degree of certain reactions. Now, when it comes to all nanoparticles, and as ACI 241 defines, a nanoparticle is 1 to 100 nanometers. I don't know why I did that. 1 to 100 nanometers. 1 to 100 nanometers. Um, there's a, a very high surface area. No matter if your particle is chemically reactive with the hydrated cement matrix or chemically inert, because you have a very small particle, what you end up having is a very small force field around that particle while it's in solution. It has a few names to it. It's either called the electrical double layer, the Goy Chapman layer, I call it the force field. And you know, the bigger your particle, the more soluble alkalis or things around your particle, um, and the greater your force field is. The smaller your particle, the less soluble alkalis are around the surface, and the smaller your force field. And when it comes down to it, because we have this smaller force field on our um, nanoparticle, we get something called heterogeneous nucleation, which means because something is small, other things will want to grow on it. And when it comes to colloidal silica, the smaller we go in the particle, just like any other nanoparticle, the smaller the electrical double layer. The other piece that we get out of it is because we have that smaller particle and we get that heterogeneous nucleation, there was a wonderful paper, paper set of papers written by Bjorn Bjornstrong back in 2003 and 2004 talking about um, the accelerated cement, cementitious or cement dissolution of A light and B light, or uh, tricalcium silicate and dicalcium silicate. And what he found was by using that three to five, or a three to five nanometer dispersion of nanosilica sized particles, he was able to get a higher degree of cementitious reaction. There was another paper written about 2002, 2003 time frame by Jamal Jayalapam out of Georgia Tech, where he did the same thing, but he did it with different size nano TiO2 particles. And the distinction between the colloidal silica and the nano TiO2 piggybacks on my discussion, which I said, you know, whether it's inert, chemically inert, or it does have a chemical impact. The other piece of the colloidal silica, why we see some tightening because of higher rate of reaction, is because of that posilonic reaction. Normally, when it comes to class F fly ash, metakaolin, silica fume, it takes a lot longer for those materials to really partake in that posilonic reaction where we're consuming more of that calcium hydroxide with the colloidal silica or the silica to create that backbone of concrete strength, the calcium silicate hydrate. There's a paper written by Land et al. back in 2012 that talks about the colloidal silica acting as a calcium silicate hydrate seeding effect or seeding site because we're getting this instantaneous posilonic reaction. So with all those combination of uh, chemical mechanisms combined, um, we get that tightening effect. So, um, David, I mean, that's basically what we're getting at. All those reasons combined, you know, one thing that we find or is causing that slump reduction, especially when we go to a smaller particle, um, and the reason why I, I, I list those reasons out, when dealing with concrete, we're not dealing with singular events. There are a lot of things going on. Some happen a lot sooner, some happen a little bit later, and then there's, of course, there's a transition time in between, but we never see a singular event, or we rarely see a singular event when it comes to these type of things. So hopefully you answered that question. Uh, thanks a bunch. Appreciate that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete, be that fault.